Let me tell you first my name, Ramola Shah, and I'm not as young as you, Sabarna, okay? I live alone, okay? But uh, I have my daughters who live in New Jersey, not that close, but they used to come mm -hmm. do grocery and my friend's son and his wife, they used to do the grocery, bring the grocery for me. Mm -hmm. And that was the hard part for me that I couldn't do things for myself. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I never liked that kind of a restrictions. So I'm independent. I'm independent. I wanted to do everything on my own. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, it wasn't that hard. It was going smooth. But to hear people's, somebody has corona and this one has corona. And every time mm -hmm. I used to be so anxious on TV to find out how many cases today, how many deaths today. So that was kind of a very stressful too knowing the numbers going up, but when it started. By month of June, it uh, really hit me. My nephew, he passed away in natural heart attack at the age of 48, leaving three children behind him. And that so happened so good. sudden, couldn't so believe it, couldn't accept it. It was very tragedy for our family. So, so. right. And couldn't believe my brother came to pick me up because he did my daughters, they didn't want me to drive alone with this kind of emotional stress. So my family came and they picked me up to go to my nephew's house. Mm -hmm. And with COVID-19, we all cannot go in the house. We were all senior, except everybody's family's children. They were young. Right. And uh, in the family, there are doctors and nurses, and they were saying, Please don't come in. Please don't come in. Put the mask. We have mask, but you know when you are crying and you are so upset, you don't remember all these restrictions. True. So it was the hard part then. So and uh, I could give a hug to my nephew's wife, children. It was really tough, tough situation then. And my sister-in-law was very upset, whose son passed away. After a couple of months, in month of September, I got another shock. My best friend's son, who was helping me to get the grocery and everything. Take a, take your time, take a break if you want, it's okay. He, he died of a heart attack too, at the age of 32. He had developed pneumonia first and all the symptoms of COVID with fever and cough and all that. So we were so fearful that he got a COVID. He, got a, he talked to the doctor and he gave him oral medication. And he said, you don't have to come to the hospital. Mm -hmm. You can quarantine yourself in the house and that treatment can be done. So he did that for 17 days, he was in the house. 
by himself in his room. But uh, he got better a little bit. He went to work after that. After three weeks, he went to work. And he worked for one week. Mm -hmm. And again, he started symptom of uh, pneumonia again. Mm -hmm. he, he had tested for COVID few times and every time he had come negative. But we still had inside the fear, maybe it is COVID, maybe it is COVID, you know, that kind of, because that atmosphere is right. like that. So right. we were staying away from him too, from his family, his wife, a child, and wife was just pregnant with two months. And- uh, So sorry to hear so, And then because of the symptoms, he went to the doctor. Doctor said, this time let you, let admit you to the hospital. So we can give you pneumonia medications through IV. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. would be more effective instead of oral. So he was admitted there and he got better in five days after the course was done. And he was sent home on Saturday in one week. Came home and on Sunday morning, 3.30 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he went to bathroom. Okay. His wife says. So... And she got up and she said, are you okay? And yeah, go back to sleep. So she went back to sleep. And he, the big noise, like a sound came and they all rushed to his room. His wife called 911. Mm -hmm. The 911 said, because he was in his stomach. Right. So they wanted him to be on his back so they can do pump his chest. In doing so, my friend, she got back injury to moving him from that position to other. Right, right. And well, anyway, the 911 came, took him to the hospital. But my friend, after he was taken to the hospital, I received a phone call. At 4.30 in the morning, my friend said, he is very sick, please come. She was crying so much. All these three weeks, four weeks, she was calling me every day. This happened today to him. This happened today to him. So it was a kind of a stressful period we both were going. Correct. Through at 4.30 in the morning in the mid when I, she just woke me up. Not even 10, 15 minutes. And she calls me back that we received a call from a hospital that he's no more. So he um, died of a heart attack, but he had developed pneumonia. During that period, everybody came, but we were all hanging around in the driveway. Hmm. Couldn't go in there, but family, they were sitting out too, because they knew that all these people cannot be in the house. Today only I went to visit her. Today, the, after so many days, I went into her house and I had feeling, is it okay, should I go? I mean, no, nobody was in the house except her. And we both had masks, but my fear is when am I going to get normal? Mm. When am I going to get out of this fear of being free? My friend's son's wife, she lost a baby. She had a miscarriage. Miscarriage. Because of the stress and shock. Right. Um, and guess. my friend, afterwards, after the uh, um, third day, uh, she was taken to the doctors for 
getting the x-ray done for her back was hurting a lot mm -hmm. and they found out she has fractured her back <laughs> so i was taking i had to take nobody else was able to take her for doctor's office and this and that so i was taking her ramology you're a one brave woman living by yourself but helping people in need you are an inspiration no. ramology i noticed my nephew he was volunteering in his town mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he was in board of education mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, very well known in the community. Volunteering in on every project of the town. He and his wife and children were there. You know, that family. So everybody was there. As soon as people learn about this incident, people were pouring by the house. Right. How can we help? How can we help? They held a memorial for him in the park, inviting the whole town to come, of those who wanted to come. And you see, oh my God, whole town was in that park. And Another thing with this son of my friend, he was very active in temple. All his age group, those young group of men, they were right away came. Few people went to the hospital to comfort his wife and mother. And they were so helpful in arranging all the last rites and rituals and making calls and these and that, whatever. But my friend doesn't have a husband. She is, all, she is a widow. So this young woman and my friend didn't know what to do. That was a serial lie and I was very amazed with how the support came. Everybody was keeping distance, no doubt, wearing masks, but they were there. To support the right. family. Support family. They were making arrangement, discussing what you need to do, what not. Right. What I concluded that it is good to be helpful in community. Mm. And especially in your neighborhood, just the immediate surrounding. Okay. That's a wonderful message. So, like this, you want to be together. Because we all live in a country where we may not have everyone, uh, you know, yeah. in, in the same city or town, but right. yet, um, even friends can be your family in times like these, right? Thank you, Ramola. Okay.